As tension rose between the British and the colonists because of the Tea Act, which allowed the East India Trade Company to trade directly with the colonists, the colonists decided to take action against the British. One night, a group of colonists disguised themselves as Native Americans, got on a British ship, and threw several crates of tea into the sea. Because of this, the British passed the Intolerable Acts, which were punishments for the colonists until they paid off the tea they had destroyed. Some of these punishments included Massachusetts Charter being cancelled, Boston Harbor being closed off until the colonists paid off their debts, and colonists being required to house British soldiers. The British created these acts in hope of bringing order to the colonists, but it just ended up making them even more angry. After the Intolerable Acts, many of the colonists were done dealing with the British making their laws. Every one of the colonies, except Georgia, sent representatives to a meeting called the First Continental Congress. This meeting was set up to debate about the relationship between Britain and America. Many believed that the only solution was violence, while some representatives from New York and Pennsylvania wanted to keep peace. They came to a compromise and told the colonists to boycott British goods, and they told militias to prepare for war. The British became suspicious of the Patriots because it seemed that the colonial militias were preparing for attack. A British man named Thomas Gage learned that supplies for the colonials were being stored in Concord, so he decided to take the supplies. Patriot spies found out the British plans. Paul Revere, a member of the Sons of Liberty, had his friend Robert Newman stand on top of a church and send signals with lanterns to Revere to show where the British were coming from. Once Revere got a signal from Newman on which direction the British were coming from, he told the local mil militias to prepare for battle. The British troops arrived at Lexington, which was near Concord, but the Patriots already had 70 men there waiting for the British. A Patriot by the name of John Parker said, Don't fire unless fired upon. A shot was fired, and the battle began. The battle ended swiftly, with eight Patriots dead and ten injured, although the British only had one soldier wounded, and they went on to take Concord. Before the British arrived at Concord, another man named Samuel Prescott notified the militias at Concord of the British marching towards them. The Patriots hid their stockpiles of weapons, and once the British got there, there was nothing for the British to take. The Patriots fired on the British, forcing them to retreat back to Boston. After the British refused to agree with the rights the Patriots were fighting for, the states held another meeting. This was the Second Continental Congress. Again, many of the representatives called for peace, and many called for war. They came to another compromise, not directly attacking the British, but preparing the militias to fight. They united the militias under the name the Continental Army and chose a Virginian named George Washington to command them. The Patriots, in need of supplies, sent an army of 400 men, commanded by Benedict Arnold, to the British Fort Ticonderoga. The Patriots were successful in capturing the fort, and the British troops sent a counterattack. The Patriots set on Breed's Hill, preparing to defend against the incoming British. Although the Patriots were outnumbered, they had high ground and a defensive stance, so they had the advantage. The British were not able to penetrate the defenses, so they had to retreat thrice. Eventually, the Patriots ran out of ammo, so they had to retreat. Although the Patriots lost, this battle showed that, while outnumbered, the Patriots could hold their own against the British military. The Patriots prepared for an attack on the British to drive them out of Boston, which would be a hard task to complete. Washington knew that they needed strong weapons to fight the British, so he commanded Colonel Henry Knox to transport the captured cannons from Fort Ticonderoga to Boston. After the cannons arrived, the Patriots settled in Dorchester Heights on, an, on Nook's Hill. The British General William Howe saw the well-placed troops and cannons on the hill when he woke up in the morning. He and his army retreated to Canada. This was a huge win for the Patriots as Boston was full of materials and had a harbor linked to many other countries. Common Sense was a pamphlet written by Thomas Paine which countered the idea that monarchs should make laws, but instead the people should. This pamphlet series started in Pennsylvania and soon grew to all across the colonies. The Declaration of Independence was an announcement that America was finally breaking away from Great Britain, which was based on three major ideas, including the fact that people had a certain unalienable rights, which should be the right to liberty and the pursuit of happiness, as well as the fact that George, the King George III wrongfully taxed the colonists without representation, and finally, that the colonists had the right to break free because the British government failed to protect the colonists. While some of the colonists wanted to stay on the defensive, others decided to go on to the offensive. Thus, some of them invaded Canada. However, after some successes and losses, the colonists were defeated, which was a major loss. The Patriots' attempt to take Canada had failed. After Canada, New York was the next target. As General George Washington set up his army in New York, a very well-equipped British fleet came and forcibly took New York through a series of battles. In the end, Washington and his army were forced back to New Jersey. Unequipped as Washington was, he had a hard time making it out with his army intact. B.
beaten and discouraged, Washington's army was shrinking. The British, thinking the revolution would end soon, simply sent a group of mercenaries to take care of New Jersey. This caused Washington and his army to retreat back to Pennsylvania. However, soon with new troops, Washington took back New Jersey by catching the mercenaries off guard because of Christmas. The British retaliated and Washington's army circled the enemy and won the battle. Needing a victory, the British wanted to weaken the colonists' hold on New England by taking back Ticonderoga with troops coming down from Canada. These troops would continue south to Albany, while troops from New York would meet them, attempting to cut off New England. While Ta Ticonderoga was taken, the New York troops had trouble with making it to their destination because of obstacles in the forests they were traveling in, placed by the Patriots. The obstacles were things such as cut down trees and dams. The Patriot militia attacked the British with great surprise. The British made it to Saratoga, New York, where they were forced to surrender. Convinced by Benjamin Franklin and the win at Saratoga, the French decided to provide help to the Patriot cause. Though the French were helping with supplies the whole time, after affirmation by Congress, the alliance became official. Thus the French sent men and ships. The Spaniards, being major enemies of Britain, also decided to help. The Spanish gathered an army of combined troops, including Patriots, French, Spanish, and Native Americans. They started from Louisiana and went east to Florida, taking over British forces as they went. As winter came, Washington settled in Valley Forge. The bitter cold was very harsh to the army, with little supplies. That would be essential for winter, including adequate food and clothing. The result led to diseases and lack of food. This caused many patriots to die. However, the British were in comfort as they are back at Pennsylvania with all the supplies in the world. From the Appalachian Mountains west, the Patriots weakened the British by targeting trading villages. Even though British won over more of the Native Americans in the west, the Patriots were still more successful than the war in the west. The British, finding the war longer and more difficult than intended, decided to try their luck at the south for a while. This was quite successful for the British as they freed slaves in return for enlisting in the British army. The war in the south was also much more brutal as the loyalists also fought against the Patriots. After facing many devastating blows, the Patriots needed a major win. While the major forces of the British were in Yorktown, Washington saw this chance and striked. Washington cut all the ways of escape and after a while, because of shortening rations of supplies and winter getting closer, the British were forced to surrender. This was the last major battle of the Revolutionary War. Soon after the defeat at Yorktown, negotiations started between America and Great Britain. After over two years, the Treaty of Paris was signed in 1783, recognizing America's independence as well as setting America's borders.